Hello and Assalamualaikum everyone. So this is our group project and our group will present about bridge defect assessment from integration of UAV thermal sensor and acoustic emission. My name is Muhammad Afif Muhammad Syairan and my group members is Nur Machita Binti Nasir and Muhammad Zamir Helmi Bin Zainul. Okay, so firstly, why we need to do bridge inspection? This is because bridge, uh, bridge tunnels, pipelines and dams are all examples of large structures that require routine inspection and maintenance. Most of these structures are decades old and have had long, have had prolonged exposure to harsh environments and loads. So aging infra infrastructures has become a major concern, especially for elevated highway and bridge, where roughly the life cost is due to repairing and maintenance. The consequence of neglecting these routine inspections are really big and even seemingly insignificant structures such as pedestrian walkways and footbridge require an inspection schedule. So that's why we need to do bridge inspection. So the importance of bridge. Bridge are key elements in the road network and constitute a major capital investment of a nation's resource. Over time, a bridge will deteriorate and become unsafe for use if no intervention action such as maintenance, rehabilitation and replacement is taken. Bridge failure involving a catastrophic collapse or simply the loss of a few critical components. For example, the bridge railings may endanger the life of public members. Also, because bridges are meant to provide passage over obstacles, any failure of a bridge may limit or severely disrupt the traffic, with consequent inconvenience and economic losses to the community. So, bridge inspection, which involves a systematic check on the physical condition of a bridge, is effective in preventing these accidents from happening by early detection and arrest of any problem that may be otherwise propagate to a critical state. There are several ways of method to do bridge inspection. Uh, a variety of methods to assess area of bridge that are inaccessible from the ground or bridge deck. Different methods work well in a different condition and with different bridge types. Progresses in visual inspection look possible in the direction of remote sensing and process automating. So, in this report, our group will cover two non destructive test methods of inspection for bridge defects, which are using thermal sensor from unmanned aerial vehicle UAV and also acoustic emission. Assalamualaikum, my name is Machita, and now I will explain the, the definition. So, bridge defect assessment is evaluating and inspecting bridge structures in order to find flaws or de deterioration so that the bridge could be repaired and undergo maintenance and prevent any bridge failure. There are several deterioration that develops common defects in bridge structures that occurs whether in superstructure or in substructure. So, the first one is defects in superstructure. In concrete bridge structure, uh, there will be corrosion, carbonation, alkali silica reaction, influence of high temperature, creep and shrinkage, water penetration and freezing top. For steel bridge structure, there will be corrosion, fatigue, cracks in elements and joints, deficiencies in connections and permanent deformation. Defects can also happen in the substructure components such as the foundations, abutments and piers and the retaining walls. Substructure components can experience the same deterioration mechanism as described in the superstructure. Concrete piers and abutments can experience deterioration as a result of steel rebar corrosion, freeze and thaw cycles, and alkali silica reactions. These components can also experience deficiencies in their performance. Okay, UAV is an unmanned aerial vehicle or uncrewed aerial vehicle, commonly known as a drone, is an aircraft without a human pilot on board and a type of unmanned vehicle. UAVs are a component of an unmanned aircraft system, which include a UAV, a ground-based controller, and a system of communications between the two. The flight of UAVs may operate with various degrees of autonomy, either under remote control by a human operator or autonomously by onboard computers. Thermal sensor is a heat imaging device or camera which is attached to an UAV like drones to measure the relative surface temperature of objects. So, by reference areas of higher temperatures, for example, a thermal camera attached to a drone can detect poor insulation in a building or areas that need to be repaired. 
A caustic emission is the phenomenon of radiation of a caustic elastic wave in solid that occurs when a material undergoes irreversible changes in its internal structure. For example, as a result of crack formation or plastic deformation due to aging, temperature gradients or external mechanical forces. In particular, AE is occurring during the processes of mechanical loading of materials and structures accompanied by structural changes that generate local sources of elastic wave. This results in small surface displacement of a material produced by elastic or stress wave generated when the accumulated elastic energy in a, ma in a material or its surface is released rapidly. Okay, for development of technology, bridge inspections are performed using a variety of methods to access areas of bridges that are inaccessible from the ground or bridge, bridge tech. Different methods work well in different conditions and with different bridge type. So the for traditional method, uh, the traditional way to document bridge defect is to send out a human in a hard hat and vest and write down on paper information such as the amount and locations of problems such as cracks, spalls and delaminations. Remote sensing experts have been updating the process by using UAV or drones to access hard to reach locations, compile with data sets and explore defects in detail using a 3D app. There's no there is no replacing people in the assessment. Human eyes and judgments are crucial, but technology can speed up and make bridge inspection safer, helping to set aside more time and money to fix structure, structure deficient bridges. The following, the following discussion details some of the more traditional access methods utilized. Aerial work platforms, or AWP, is defined in the Code of Federal Regulations and includes a variety of equipment commonly referred to as under bridge inspection vehicles, snoopers, lifts, bucket trucks. This equipment is the com is the most common method for assessing difficult to reach areas of a bridge. Um, some of the advantages of AWP is ability for inspector to be within arms reach of bridge components, its availability, reliability, and versatility. Uh, but there's also some disadvantages, which are high capital and maintenance costs. Safety of inspector and public and bridge weight restriction. Rope access is another accepted form of access for bridge inspections. This method involves specially trained and certified rope access professionals using ropes and climbing equipment to access portions of the bridge which are inaccessible from the ground or the bridge deck. So the advantages of rope access is uh, it is able for inspector to be within arm's reach of bridge components. It is low for equipment cost and lane closures are not required. The disadvantages is availability, mobilization cost and training requirements. For modern methods, we will cover three types of technology, which are infrared thermography, unmanned aerial vehicle and a cost emission. So the infrared thermography, the foundation of it also known as thermal imaging, uh, is that all objects emit infrared. It can be used during normal operating condition and used from a safe distance. It provides visual picture of the condition of the installation and its components. So the advantages, uh, it, is, it has real-time results and little or no processing needed. It is easy to use, can detect conditions and defects before they become serious problems. Uh, it is time efficient and can have exact location of the potential problematic point can be easily determined. The disadvantages is that it have to interpret the result requires a certain experience and knowledge. Uh, obtaining high accuracy can be difficult due to very varying emissivity of the different materials, reflection from other surfaces and other characteristics. And it is also necessary to have a direct view of the electrical components being scanned. Covers have to be removed, which can be a hazardous activity. Drones provide a cost effective solution to quickly identify bridge damages, performance, and capacity deterioration issues. Because they are easier and more cost effective to deploy, engineers can regularly inspect and monitor the bridges, hence, improve the maintenance and safety while extending the service life of the structures. Some of the advantages are collecting comprehensive bridge status information. Eases bridge inspection while lowering costs, improve safety for workers and public, generate trading model of bridges, and easily 
and quickly identify defects. The disadvantages are overburden of regulations, need paperwork, and assume liability. So for costing emission, it is able to detect a range of damage mechanism can be conducted during operation, during qualification, proof testing, or development testing. It can locate damage sources and can be differentiated. Um, it can assess the structure of machine under real operational conditions. It is a non-invasive method. And the caustic machine is a operational in hazardous environments like high temperatures, high pressures, and corrosive nuclear environments. It can be conducted remotely and detect damages and defects that are difficult to access with conventional non destructive testing techniques. Um, but the, the disadvantages are it's limited to assessing structural integrity or mission help by locating issues for the inspection. It's usually required to fully diagnose issues. It cannot detect defects that may be present but that do not move or grow. It is lower than other non destructive testing techniques. The objectives of this project are to explore the use of integration of UAV thermal sensor in bridge inspections, study the use of acoustic emission AE in bridge defects assessment, expose students on various engineering technology, determine general application of technology for bridge inspections, and enhance knowledge related to engineering survey. Now I will explain the theory and concept for thermal sensing. In thermal remote sensing, radiations emitted by ground objects are measured for temperature estimation. These measurements give the radiant temperatures of a body which depends on two factors, which are kinetic temperature and emissivity. So, for the wavelength and spectral range for um, thermal sensing, the infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum is usually considered to be from 0 0.7 to 1000 micrometer. Within this infrared portion, there are various nomenclatures and little consensus among various groups to define the sub boundaries. In terrestrial remote sensing, the region of 3 to 35 micrometer is popularly called thermal infrared. As in all other remote sensing missions, data acquisitions are made only in regions of this spectral absorption known as the atmospheric windows. Within the thermal infrared, an excellent atmospheric window lies between 8 until 14 micrometer wavelength. Further windows lie in 3 to 5 micrometer and 17 to 25 micrometer. Interpretation of the data in 3 to 5 micrometer is complicated due to overlap with solar reflection in the imagery and 17 to 25 micrometer region is still not well investigated. Thus, 8 to 14 micrometer region has been of greatest interest for thermal remote sensing. So the theory and concept for acoustic emission is the acoustic wave propagation. In elastic material formation leads to the release of elastic energy absorbed within the material. The mechanical wave does produce radiate from a defect source and get detected by the transducers that are located on the surface of such a material. So the amplitude and consequently the energy of the stress falls generated at a defect source can vary drastically depending on the nature of the defect and the dynamics of the source process. Basically, an AE signal can be classified into two types, which are transient signal bursts and continuous signal. In transient signal bursts, the signals have a definite start and end points deviating clearly from breaker noise. For continuous signal, as the name implies, as the name implies, these are continuous waves who have varying amplitudes and frequencies but never end. There are several instruments that will be used for this project. So for the hardware, we'll be using UAV drones to carry out aerial survey to examine the bridge. The thermal camera is to detect subsurface illuminations in bridge decks without physical contact, and then. Acoustic emission sensor, which is to detect the mechanical transition elastic waves generated from within a structure and convert them into electrical AE signals. For software, the first one is Mission Planner. It is an open autopilot software for drones as a configuration utility or as a dynamic control supplement. 
IG soft meta shape is to process raw image from drones and then Optris Pi Connect is an IR camera software to process output of thermal survey and the last one is Noesis it is a windows based software program for advanced acoustic emission data analysis pattern recognition and neural networks okay next is type of data uh, there are several of data that we get from a beach inspection but here we only wanted to discuss the data from two main sources which is thermal sensor and acoustic emission as these two are the main technique that we use in the detecting defection of a bridge so in thermal sensor in this picture uh, this is an example of data produced from thermal sensor we can identify the size of the crack and how severe it is just by looking at the temperature and with the help of software if we look here the most critical crack will contain a high temperature other than the other crack so we can determine the size of crack better with the help of thermal sensor okay next is acoustic emission in this table this is an example table of data from acoustic emission typical acoustic emission sources is in concrete may include cracking plastic deformation friction due to aggregate interlock and the bonding of aggregate and motor one of the first successful attempts to quantify acoustic emission for RC beams was carried out. They introduced the concrete beam integrity, CBI, CBI ratio. That was the result of experiments carried out on several kinds of RC beams and frame specimen subject to cyclic loading. Uh, the researchers conclude that a decreasing trend in CBI values is expected of a damaged specimen and can thus estimate the severity of damage. So, when the CBI ratio is small, then the damage level of crack is high. Just like this table. Okay, next is methodology of works. Okay, the first one is crack detection using high resolution digital imaging, HRDI. Uh, this is a brand new developed concrete crack detection technology using high quality digital image and image processing software. Uh, before this, in the past, Conventional inspection techniques using digital image processing had not been widely applied for practical use due to its limited image quality and because it is typically expensive and the application was limited primarily to technical research application and special forensic professional service. Okay, in this image below, it shows uh, an illustration of HDV results of a pre-stressed concrete box builder. Innovative crack identification algorithm can identify and quantify concrete cracks as narrow as 0 0.008. So, a special advantage of this HRDI crack detection technology with respect to crack identification and measurement is the ease of maintaining a historical record of breach cracks for use in monitoring crack propagation over time. The crack width, length, and location data developed by using the system can provide powerful decision making support information for engineers with breach maintenance planning responsibilities. It can also dramatically reduce data logging and long term condition record keeping and facilitates economic comparative evaluation on a recurring basis. The second one is infrared thermography technology, IR thermography. By using IR thermography technology, engineers can check the delimination and spelling of concrete about three times faster than they can by conducting conventional sounding tests because IR technology applicants require significantly less staging to secure adequate site access and correspondingly less traffic control to collect the required field data. Currently, Infrared versus traditional sound test after a 40% savings in cost. Okay, so in this first graph, uh, this graph illustrates the mechanism of the infrared thermography methodology. The red line depicts daily temperature variation of the eliminated concrete, while the blue line illustrate the daily temperature variation for concrete in good condition and the second pictures is shows 
two delimited concrete surface with different temperature. Okay, infrared imaginary technology is applicable during the periods when temperature differentials are detectable over time. It is not always possible to detect the elimination of concrete only from the color of variation of infrared imagery since the concrete structure itself tends to have a temperature gradient depending on location and orientation with respect to the sun. And the third one is philosophy of testing concrete bleach by acoustic emission. Before any reliable test on bleach could be done, it was necessary to perform a series of measurements on model elements and full-scale structures under control loading condition. Testing elements in a lab enable us to learn more about the features of the observed phenomenon. We also give important information concerning the setup of the testing equipment. This is the flow chart for testing concrete bridge by acoustic emission. So we need to do model element testing first. After that, full-scale element testing. And then the final is full-scale structure testing. For planning of work, we have process flow that starting from st planning stage to produce stage. First, for planning stage, for uh, we collect all the data source from client where the bridge is defect. Data source is from picture, coordinate, area, and location. Second, working stage. From data source from client, we can start our project to detect bridge defect more specific based on the activity, sensor placement, calibration of test equipment, loading a structure, data acquisition. Then we go to produce stage. The produce stage is the acquisition emission test model has been proposed to detect bridge defect. Based on this model, the engineer will prepare the design to fix the defection of the bridge. Okay, we go to process of work. This is illustration of process of work of detecting bridge defect. So we go to the next process. This first is a sensor placement process. It is difficult to detect inspection, but we can use simple to transduce a linear array test to check linear array at the bridge. Using acoustic emission source, we can locate F exit source in linear location array is an error in source location that increases as a distance between the source and the array increase. AEWM processor evaluate the order of this recipient of the acoustic burst at the various sensor and use two guard sensor when the normal distance is encountered between the potential noise source and active transduced array as encountered in the stringer beams and the approach span the hyperbola used for location become more curved at acoustic emission sources close the activity transduces the transduder may be offset of the ends of the plates and still have the ability to look around the transduders and detect defects that apparently would be located outside of the transduders area. Paint on the test surface should be clean and checked to see that this tightly adhered period prior. To place the transduce because drifts many effect coupling efficiency and impair a test. This is necessary to use some types of hold down device to firmly affix the sensor to the test specimen because the device applies approximately 20 pounds of normal force on the sensor. Should causal lead wire connects a sensor to a preamplifier used to connect the preamplifier to the AEWM. Sensor employed in the test are typically resonance piezoelectric trends have a contouring frequencies of about 150 kHz. Next. 
we go to the calibration of test equipment. The system should be calibrated after the sensor are placed and the signal cables are connected to the AEWM. The pulse tensors is placed along the test line between the two TV active sensors and the pulse is run at the pulse repetition rate that exceed that of the flow model used in a AEWM. The activated pulse sends ultrasonic frequency sound wave into the test material and trips the AEWM detection model by the SIT, the two activity transducers. The operation determines whether the flow model is tripped and if the calibration test properly located where the pulsing transducers was placed between the two active transducers in the array. Initial calibration test should be conducted in ensure that the guards will prevent noise outside the area from giving a superior AE deflection Next, we go to the loading of the structure. Acoustic transmission structure monitoring requests the activation of the flow related AE source and must be activated by an imposed load or stress. To conduct the service monitor, AE instrument list listened for the AE activity while the bridge is subject normal traffic induced stress. Fixed source of AE activity may be readily detected when proof stress and large flows not subjected to subcritical crack growth also may be detected. Tests may be conducted over the long time period to provide an idea of the activity rate and few potential AE source mechanism will be activated. Simplify the data analysis. And short term tests, 4 or 5 days, should be sufficient to detect active fetish crack. This we can easily locate fetish cracks at the bridge. Next, we go to process of data. 11.1 Data Acquisition Send gauge data will quick reveal whether the member has been heavily stressed due to a uh, presence of one or more structs on the bridge and use to anticipate whether the exciting crack subject to fetish crack growth and also estimate how active any detect crack growth may be. Strain gauge data are not necessary in all case but provide additional information that may help X. Plan AE resource obtained while monitor as structure and Test data analyzed by the AEWM will not be recorded in that mode. Only the flow indication will be recorded. They may be wrote to a printer for a hard copy record. Calibration information also may be recorded on hard copy prior to the test for subsequent reporting purpose. When testing level and AE flow indication, it is desirable to shift the sensor in the relation to the flow position and really monitor the test site until another flow indication. Repositioning of the tensor area will not shift the location for the subsequent indication when the flow indication noise related. Thus, the safeguard are considered necessary to ensure integrity of AEW and findings. AE data may be returned to the laboratory or office and subsequently corrected with the with other information, including the strange gauge test result and fracture mechanism mechanism calculation. It determines the severity of any potential defect in the structure. Next. 11.2 Propose the acquisition emission test model. Theoretical limited detection curve of the particular steel AE gain the transfer spacing. For any minimum crack, uh, example length, envelope load, and 
stress will simulate detect the value e activity for the life load stress less than u. No crack any size will produce detectable AE activity. Once curve have been obtained experimentally and the life load stress have been measured on the structure member, the minimum crack of size level AE detection could be detected using the frequency loading data obtained from the strange gauge test. The test duration necessary to reliability detect a fetish crack might also be determined. Curve may represent a special fracture mechanism variable KAE. The cycle test intensity increment requires to produce AE activity having a 90% probability of detection. Various tests encounter his histogram a due different individual vehicle or combination of vehicle loadings and structure over the specific time period 24 hours in an example. The monitor period should be sufficient to detect any AE activity related to fetish crack growth. Conversely, when the structure member contains no cracks and it is monitored 24 hours without AE indication, one of many assume that if a crack exists in must be similar must be smaller than a uh, AE ATV active crack size indicate. A major concern or uh, drawback with his approach is that AE dead periods are possible during fetish crack growth. Not every load stress cycle and bridge member may be expected to produce crack growth or AE activity. That has been very verified by previous laboratory tests. Bridge indicates a uh, presence of AE dead periods of the field under strain limit the loading out of plane condition. That behavior believes the related either fetish crack or retardation or to temporary retardation of the crack found. Full size welded specimen contain reducial or react stress do not show the effect of reduction detention AE deprim may a uh, phenomena restricted small specimen lacking sensor or there on the stress where the fetish crack is do not retard in the large structure under normal stretch limiting load conditions when fetish crack do not retard in the large structure under normal stretch limiting loading conditions. Their behavior should be detect, determined experimentally when AE dead period exists. They will affect the crack size or growth rate that can be detected on the given structure and also the required duration of any AE test. It's the full that crack in initiation as such may be detected by AE monitoring. Laboratory information has been obtained to determine the reliability AE detection at the given stress range. So we go to output. In this project, we using a thermal and acoustic emission to determine defection inside the bridge very clearly. This example of inspection result. We can see a dot here is an inspection or drain hole and determination. This is a determination. Next, from this statement, based on this point, we can know that UAV system is very easy to an economy use for the commercial such as detecting inspection bridge locating area and it can cover the large area of the aerial photo. Thermal also help to detect the inspection very specific because it's a radiated concept of black body that can detect the different of temperature reading using different color of thermal. Okay now accuracy and analysis. 
The accuracy of the method was reflected on the result for the image aligned to the damage result within 12% when compared to the direct measurements. Some of the disadvantages of these methods include the inability to obtain accurate results when the camera is not aligned to the damage as shown with the results for the image to the side of the damage. From a lab experiment, the results demonstrated to the level of accuracy this method was able to obtain with percent differences within 3.5% and 7.4% for the crack lengths and thicknesses respectively. And finally, conclusion and recommendation. In conclusion, UAV thermal imaging is a promising method to retrieve highly resolved spatial information on concrete surface temperature within a short amount of time. Once the UAV thermal imaging becomes available, the introduced procedure can be analyzed and determine whether a defect exists and hence useful in quantifying the delimited areas present in the bridge deck. This system can be implemented in bridge inspection manuals to add safer, more frequent and potentially less costly bridge tech inspection and enable more informed decision making. Acoustic emission method is useful for the evaluation of the integrity of reinforced concrete structures. It can be successfully used for selected bridge or their elements that need to be renovated or scrapped. However, for each type of structures, individual evaluation criteria must be selected. This requires performing model tests of reinforced and pre-stressed concrete beams in different loading modes. We strongly hope that in the near future, the owner of bridge and bridge industry will accept the recommended practice for testing reinforced and pre-stressed concrete structures by acoustic emission. And that's all from our group. Thank you for watching.